What up? Welcome to the Homeless Hustler Podcast. Ah, I am terrified. (laughs) I am absolutely terrified recording this for y'all. But as they say, the show must go on, right? So welcome to Season 1, Episode 1 of the Homeless Hustler Podcast. By the title of the podcast, you can get it. This podcast is going to be um, about my journey um, and through entrepreneurship and things I've experienced in my lifetime um, from being homeless and grinding out of those situations. So um, let me take you back to the first time I ever experienced being homeless. I was about, I was only homeless for like one day at this time. It's like a thing. It was like an overnight thing. So I grew up in a city where your mom, friends, kids is your cousins. I don't know where y'all from, but I'm from Delaware. Your mom, friends, kids is your cousins. Your mom, friends, nieces and nephews who were adults who got kids. Those is your cousins too. Okay. So, in 1988 or 89, my mom um, discovered crack cocaine. Tell you that story another time. But she discovered crack cocaine. And she has two sides to her. So, one side is a grinder, a hustler, the most stand-up person there is in the world. And the other side was the side that got into her addiction. No issue. Again, tell you about how she got, my mom got on crack and all that in another video. Um, So, one day, she takes me to Tracy's house. Tracy's apartment. On Vander Avenue. Now, I'm going to name a whole bunch of names. You ain't going to know none of them. Now, if somebody from home here, they're going to know all of them. But it's no it's no knock to these people. I love them. Like, we're not close now. We know each other. We, it's all love. But they was, we was family. So, we, I'm in 89. I'm probably seven. So, this is 90 because I had to be like eight. Closer than nine. It's summertime. My mom dropped me off at Tracy's. Eat, hang out, whatever. She dips off to go get busy. Right? So, in the midst of her getting off, getting busy, we young. So, my play cousin is a girl. It's a bunch of us at the house. It's me, it's Porky, Yeti, uh... Me, Porky, Yeti, Piggy, Shantae, her bougie ass. She was bougie when we was kids. Shantae, Goat, her name Marquita, but she was a great ball player, so we call her Goat. Goat, Lawan, who's a young adult, but way older than us, but she's like a young adult. She's like 19, and then it was Tushan. So Tushan is... If I'm 41, Tushan got to be like 43. So if I'm nine, she 11. But she like 5'8". I'm like 4'6". She like 5'8". And she a bully. But we kids. That's what you do. You fight whatever. She a bully. So anyway, we something happened at the house. I'm there by myself. So it's all of them and me. I'm the outsider. But... I'm the insider because I'm allowed to be there, but I'm the outsider. So somehow, me and Tushan get into it about something. Mind you, she like 5'8", and she probably like 130, so she big as fuck. I'm little as shit. Even though I take martial arts, I'm still little as shit. Um, So I lock myself in the bathroom. So Tracy and them is doing whatever they doing in the back, whatever, whatever. They ain't paying us no mind. I'm in the bathroom for like 30 minutes. I'm locked in the bathroom because it's the only safe place. So at, they trying to get in the bathroom like a butter knife or something. So I'm super fast at the time. So boom. 
somehow the bathroom get open. I unlock the door or some shit, but they get into the bathroom. Tushan, big ass, go to swing me. Duck her, spin, boo, 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 boo. I'm going. Mind you, it's like 12.30 at night. I leave. Boom. I disappear. So, I run to, to Parkside. So, in my city, we got this big-ass park called Prices where all the Hoopers go, like all the legends and all the Hoopers go. So, there's A Courts, the main side, and then there's Parkside, which is the side by where I grew up on 22nd. So... I go to Acor. I mean, I go to Parkside. I'm sitting on the bench. I mean, on the fucking gazebo. The gazebo down by the court. It's summertime, but it's late. So, you know, it's, it's a little chilly, but it ain't too bad. So, I'm chilling. I don't got no basketball. So, I'm just chilling. Like, I'm just sitting there. So, eventually, after like four or five hours, I fall asleep. Um, now is the morning, so it's like nine o'clock. True story. I'm asleep. I hear the basketball, but I'm still asleep. It's two dudes at the park hooping their brothers. Um, Glenn and I don't want to mess his brother name up. But they was from Pine Street, like 20, either 24th and 25th or 25th and 26th of Pine. But they both went to Mount Pleasant. Glenn was nice as shit. His brother was cool, but Glenn was good. I don't know what happened to him. He, but he, when we was kids, he he funded, He was good as shit. But I'm asleep. They know it's me. So I wake up eventually. And I'm like, yo, what's up? They like, oh, shit. We didn't know that was you, love. I'm like, yo, why you ain't wake me up? And he was like, nigga, we didn't know it was you. Like, me, it wasn't gone. We thought you was dead. Nigga, like, what? Boom. So, I don't leave the park. I stay down there and play ball with them. I ain't eight. But I can hear the siren. And the siren is my mom screaming my name. She's screaming my name from 22nd Street, which is like, hmm, block and a half, two blocks away. But I can hear the siren. I ain't moving. Because I have an explanation as to why I'm down here. Mind you. I told you she left me there the night before. It's the next day she gets back. Where's Levin? He left. What do you mean he left? He left. They don't never tell her that two was bullying me. She trying to whip my ass. I don't entertain none of that. They just said I left, which was not true. Love you, Tushan. No issue. We was kids. It is what it is. Never had nothing against you. Love you to death. But you was a bully. But it is what it is. So... She's still big as shit now. She's like 6'2". She's fine as fuck, though. She's like 6'2". But anyway, um, I hear the siren. I'm out screaming my name. I'm like, I don't say nothing. I'm still hooping. She come down to the park. She looked like the dragon. She be getting high all night. I'm not where I'm supposed to be. She ready to whip some tail. So, needless to say, I didn't get in trouble because once I explained to her, whoop de whoop de whatever, 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 blah, 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 blah. She get back around there and make a big deal. Blah, 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 blah. We cussing and fussing. Leave him alone. Blah, blah, blah. You shouldn't have did nothing. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, next weekend, back down there hanging with them again because we family. It don't matter. But that was my first um, experience with having nowhere to go. Handle it differently. Um, I just did what I know to do. I love basketball. I know the park. I know anybody could do nothing to me. Went to the park. Um, it would be a while before I experience it again. But we'll get to now. We're gonna get to the first time I had to hustle. So. Back in the day, everybody moms used to order the CDs, like 12 CDs for a penny. But where they would get you, it would be 12 CDs for a penny, but $29.99 for shipping and handling. Now, what kind of backwards hustle was this? But it used to work. They would order 12 CDs for a penny, 
and pay $29 for shipping and handling for 12 CDs. The business models in the 80s was crazy. Nonetheless, I used to skip school so fast. There's a I'm skipping to middle school when I'm living with my aunt. But I'll get in in the midst of these stories, you'll get the timeline. But I'm like in sixth grade, so I'm 11. So this is two years after the Tushan thing. So I'm in sixth grade. I'm going to Skyline. I'm suspended. Now, mind you, here's the up. My aunt don't drive. My aunt go to work at two o'clock. All I got to do is be Swayze for six hours. Mind you, I live on the north side of town. I could have easily just went to the west side of town. I stay on the north side of town. I'm ducking cars and all kinds. Why? My aunt don't drive. But now I'm hungry. Here's where the hustle comes in. Now, forgive me, people, but I wasn't really a criminal, but I was criminal adjacent in my youth. So... The, as my mom would say, the ups man, UPS, used to come and bring your CDs and put them on your step and drive off. Nobody had to sign for them back in the day. And if your CDs got missing, they would just resend you the order. Okay. I used to follow the UPS man around. If I seen the truck on a block, I would follow him house to house, see what he dropped. If it was the CD box, I clipped the CD box. So I would clip the CD box. Dip off, open it, count the CDs, then go to Ernie's Barbershop and hustle the CDs so I have money to eat for the day. That was my first hustle. Way back before there was ever my brother-in-law, Buck CD. Shout out to Buck. Way before mixtapes and all that. For all that, I used to clip CDs off people's steps. Right? Bust the box. Check the order, see what was there. Go to the barbershop, sit in the barbershop, talk to the barbers I know. Go in my book bag and say, yo, I got CDs. They $5. That was my first hustle. So I used to get like $50, $40, $50 every day. That was my first hustle. Um, It's going to be a million episodes because I got so much to tell. Um, so I appreciate you listening and understanding I am inside. I am trembling going down memory lane with you, but this is the homeless hustler podcast episode one. I appreciate you come back and see me.